Like I always say, you can make sushi out of just about anything. And today we've got a fish that I'm sure you've never seen. This is one of those fish that's just so strange, so wild. One of those things maybe you'd see in an aquarium. But believe it or not, apparently it makes quite good sushi. But it's a little weird looking. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it in a second here. But part of me doesn't really know how I'm going to fillet this thing. Let's think back to when I had this massive yellow fin tuna in my kitchen. That thing was 60 pounds and thick as can be. So thick, in fact, that it's actually hard to cut your knife all the way in there. But with this one, it's the total opposite. This fish is thin as it can possibly be. And for that reason, I don't really know how much meat's actually gonna be there. But I guess we're gonna find out. Today, we have a Peruvian moonfish. Now from the side, there's not a whole lot that jumps out at you other than perhaps the long, long forehead. I mean, this fish pretty much is a forehead. And it's actually pretty funny. But I happen to think it looks really, really cool. And I always love getting super, super unique things like this in my kitchen. So if you get over that forehead, the real thing for me is when you turn it like this. I mean, there's suddenly pretty much nothing there. And I think it's pretty funny. And yeah, if I were some massive shark looking for food and this thing was pretty far away from me, I don't know how you'd ever see it. This thing can remain perfectly hidden. But the real problem is, turn the wrong way and suddenly you're this massive, massive target. Nature's so cool. But like I said, apparently these make some pretty good sushi. So let's get cooking. I know I don't typically go through my sushi rice routine, but at some point I want to show everyone how to do the proper sushi rice. When making sushi rice, you have to consider that they're all these perfect fine grains. That means that when you go to eventually eat this, you want to be able to see and taste every grain individually. And as long as you follow this simple process, you'll get fantastic sushi rice every time. In this bowl of cold water here, I have two cups of sushi rice. Sushi rice is short grain rice, which as you can see here, are these really, really small little pieces. The first step to making really any rice is to thoroughly rinse it off until the water runs Clear. So I'll repeat this process a few times till we have this perfectly clear water. Now after just a few minutes of rinsing, look how clear that water is. At this point, we have rice that's ready to cook. In a small saucepan, we'll start with two cups of our sushi rice, and I'll cover it with three cups of water. First, we'll bring this up to a boil. Once this reaches a boil, cover it and reduce it to a simmer. Allow this to cook for 20 minutes, and keep an eye on it because it likes to boil over the top. If that's happening too much, give the pan a slight crack just like this with the lid, and that should help. Now I'm going to be using a slightly different knife today because this fish is such a small little cutie here. This technically isn't a fillet knife, it's called a boning knife, but it's still really flexible and it'll let me do the work that I need. There's a very unique process in filleting one of these fish. Like we talked about, they're so incredibly thin and there's not a whole lot there. So to start, I'm almost gonna score this really thin light line all the way around one side of the fish, just like this, until I get down to that anal fin. Once I've made this nice outline here, I'm actually gonna trace around the edge of the entire fish. The closer to the edge that I get here, the more meat I'm obviously gonna get. I do the same thing all the way around the bottom of this fish as well. Once I've gotten my outline all the way around this whole fish, we're ready to peel off the skin. Starting right up above the eye here at the corner, I'm just gonna grab onto the skin and slowly begin peeling it back. It'll definitely leave a bit of residue on the fish, but this silver area over here is all totally edible and more importantly, really soft. It's really just this gristly outer part that you need to peel off the fish. Once we peel all of this tough skin off, we've basically isolated this whole area of the fish on this side that we can eat. Once we're finished with the first side, let's flip it over and do the same thing on the second side. Again, I'm gonna lift up this little fin here and I'll start on the bottom this time, coming up and around right through the top of the eye. Once I do that, again, I'm gonna trace all the way around the entire fish right up by the edge of it, which again will allow us to peel back all of that outer skin which we can't eat. This top part here is really easy to start peeling back, but then once we reach this section, it gets a little bit more difficult. That one was definitely a lot easier than the first side for one reason or another. Now to get this meat off, I'm gonna start up by the head here and just start to come in with my flexible knife bringing it all the way down towards the tail. At that point, we should be able to lift this up slightly. And looking in, you can see we've done a really good job separating the meat from the spine here. Now, while we keep this lifted, I'll get my knife right over the top of the backbone. And then I'll cut through a couple of those pin bones there, which should separate it enough that we can cut down around the head again, and then do the same thing with our knife, pressing it flat against the fish as we slowly cut away the rest of that filet. Now, all I have to do to release it is just do this one last cut here. And then our filet will be complete. For such a thin fish, we really got a lot of meat here. Here. Again, same thing on the other side. Now here's where we know we've done a good job filleting this fish. It may be hard to tell with the light, but you can see right through that fillet there. This thing is as clean as it can possibly be. And other than a little bit of meat in the cheek here, there's not a ton that we can do with the head. But you can always throw this whole thing in and make a nice fish stock. Let's get to that sushi. After about 20 minutes, our rice looks gorgeous. So with a rubber spatula that won't break any of those individual grains of rice, unlike something harsher like a metal spoon, I'll gently scoop and drop this into a bowl. This is where I'm really gonna allow it to fluff up. 
and more importantly to cool off a little bit before we go ahead and pour the glaze over it that'll eventually let it get nice and sticky. Now in a pan we'll combine a half cup rice vinegar, about a tablespoon of vegetable oil, a quarter cup of white sugar, a tiny pinch of mirin because I love mirin, and just a little sprinkle of salt. Stir this up until the sugar dissolves and then we'll pour it right over the top of the rice. Now over the top of our sushi rice we'll pour about two thirds of this mixture. I usually don't end up pouring all of it because it makes the rice way too wet or it just takes too long for the rice to really soak everything in and get dry enough to actually make sushi with it. But you do need enough that the rice will get nice and sticky. So once this mixture is in there, I like to come under the rice and just lift it up a few times to mix everything together. This way you're not mashing the rice together. Instead, you're almost just fluffing it up a little bit and making sure that everything is well combined. Now we'll let this sit aside for a little while until we're ready to assemble those sushi rolls. For our tempura batter, because who doesn't love tempura sushi, we're gonna do one cup of sparkling water, try to make sure it's unflavored if you can, one cup of all-purpose flour, and one large egg, or in the case of what I have, two very small ones. Now we'll whisk this up. You should really start to see that foam appearing on there. And that's what's gonna give us a really nice light and fluffy tempura batter. I often like to add a nice golden brown spice like turmeric or something that'll give me that brighter color when I go to fry something. And then there's one more key ingredient for tempura and that's ice cubes. These will keep the batter really nice and cold and it'll help us to get a better product when we go to fry. So gently whisk those cubes in and leave them in there for when we go to dip. Once your fryer reaches about 375 Fahrenheit, we're gonna take off the lid, quickly dredge our fish in that tempura batter and once your fish is well dredged drip off a teeny bit of the excess and then slowly sway it back and forth in that frying oil until it falls down gently do the same thing with the rest of your fish slowly swaying them around in the frying oil and then dropping them gently in because we're using these for sushi we do want to get these nice straight lines tempura should cook fairly quickly and once it pops to the top just let it cook until it's nice and golden brown once they're nice and golden brown take them out these babies are as crispy as can be immediately we want to grab all of these out onto our tray and while they're still oily and a bit bubbly, we'll hit them with a teeny bit of salt. That way the salt should actually stick to them. Of course, to assemble our sushi roll, we start with a piece of nori. Our first step will be to cut off some of the top of our nori here. When we go to roll our sushi roll, there won't be a huge extra piece sticking out at the end. Let's start by placing down a nice heap of our sushi rice. We wanna spread this out nice and evenly across our nori, such that we have an even coating, but it's not too thick. Usually, it's great to be thick. This isn't one of those times. Our first step here will be to add a little bit of rice seasoning. In addition to those toasted sesame seeds, this just gives a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of that nori, and some kind of umami flavor. Next, we're gonna add down our tempura fish. Looks like we'll need another little piece to extend off the end here, which is fine. Because I'm going for somewhat of a nice crunchy roll, here. Next, I'm going to place down my cucumber, followed by a nice line of Japanese mayonnaise, and then just a little bit of wasabi painted ever so lightly across the top of my tempura. That'll give us just a nice tiny little kick that I'm quite frankly very excited for. And to really hit home with those crispy levels, I'm going to go with my crispy onions. If you've seen my videos before, you already know that I absolutely love these things. And those are going to work wonders in this sushi roll. To roll it up, I'll keep everything nice and tight, come quickly over the top, and then press. Then to finish the rest of the roll, I'll roll it all the way over the top of itself and press one more time. And that right there is a really nice looking sushi roll. Now to mix it up just a little bit, let's do something slightly different for our second roll here. Believe it or not, torched avocado is fantastic. With a little culinary torch, you can get them pretty much fully black and they actually look really cool. But more importantly, that extra dark color on them doesn't necessarily signify that they're burnt. Instead, it's a bunch of very unique flavor. I used to work in this restaurant where we had a dish that had a big ring of avocado that had been heavily torched. Then it was topped with a really nice fresh and light shrimp salad. That's what actually taught me to torch avocados. So I'm gonna try that inside this roll. Now what you're looking at right there, flavor. Once we toss on that tempura fish and a little bit of Japanese mayo, I can already tell you this roll right here is gonna be a home run. Once we have our gorgeous sushi rolls prepared, we'll quickly go through and cut them. When you're slicing sushi rolls, be confident and make sure you're using a sharp knife. If you must, you can take that bamboo roller that you used and go back over them a second time after slicing them if you really wanna neaten them up a little bit more. But I think just looking at both of these that I can safely say these are fantastic. Now I'm not gonna make you wait, let's try them. To start here, I wanna put a little bit of wasabi in my soy sauce. Then I'll mix that up just a little bit here and that'll give me the perfect dipping sauce. Let's start out with that crispy roll. I wanna take a light little dip in my soy sauce bath and then that is just fire. Wow, that's amazing. Before I do say anything, let me just try the other one. I know they're gonna be quite different, but I just wanna get that comparison in. So same thing here for our nice avocado roll. A nice little dip and then down the hatch. Ooh, 
Ooh, mmm, wow. We have an easy, easy clear winner here. But let me start by saying I like these two different rolls for a big reason. On this side here, we have that crispy roll and overall it's a bit more tame. But what I love is that I can taste that fish and the fish itself is extremely flavorful. I know there wasn't much meat in that whole fish, but damn, is it good. Then we got this one over here. If I spin it around, you can see that really nice big hunk of avocado and that torch on there is absolutely out of this world. I don't entirely know how to describe that to you, but it brings out this whole nother flavor in avocado that you've really never experienced before. The avocado is still an avocado. It's creamy, it's smooth, but there's something about adding that char that brings this thing to a whole new level. And not to mention that tempura on the outside of the fish still gives a nice slight crunch to it. So this is the roll I would pick any day. I'm just gonna add all these sushi rolls to my plate so I can sit down and enjoy a nice meal. Maybe I'll add that soy sauce right in the middle so that we got a perfect well. At the end of the day, sushi can't really come in a more presentable way than this. You get a really Really nice flat plate. You bring that out to your guests, everybody goes home happy. But in all seriousness, I hope you love the video. This sushi really was amazingly good, and I hope that you're continuing to see that you can literally make sushi out of anything anything. Give me your best shot. I'm telling you, I can make sushi out of it. Wrap it in a little nori and a little bit of rice, teeny bit of soy sauce, and maybe wasabi at the end. Please toss a like on the video because that always keeps us going. And it's so, so easy to do if you actually like watching the video. If not, I don't want you to be dishonest. So don't hit the like button. I'm okay with that. And please don't forget to subscribe and join the notifications gang. The notifications gang is the best. I'll see you next time.